What's going on, Facebook? What's going on, boys and girls everywhere around the world? Hey, man, it's your guy, Ty, uh, Q Servative Turner, man. Just wanted to, uh, uh, just give my take. I know there's a new movement that's starting. It's called the walk away, uh, movement. And that, that walk away movement is actually encouraging individuals, especially, um, those who have been uh, uh, left in the dark and left in, uh, left behind by the Democrat Party to move away. You know, it doesn't matter if you're going to go to the conservative movement. Just walk away from uh, issues that don't that does not help you when it comes to your community. Um, one thing about me, uh, people always ask me, Ty Turner, why did you leave uh, the Democrat Party? Uh, and, you know, they actually it was a really tough decision. You know, when I was uh, part of the Democrat Party, I was actually a high ranking uh, member of the state party. I was elected and actually was in a position itself, you know, to make some changes and actually could have really moved ahead even easier when it comes to uh, my political standing. But the thing about it is I started seeing policies, you know, policies within the party uh, that was not really affecting which can were not helping my community. I started seeing the division within the Democrat Party. I started to see how one group of individuals would actually separate themselves from another group of individuals. But yet the other individuals, who had, which made up 47 percent, which was African-American, were actually the ones who were being left behind. And so I tell individuals this, you know, why I decided to walk away. I didn't walk away because I was mad, because I lost an election, because I was pissed off, because I didn't like, you know, uh, certain people. I just didn't like the movement. I, I'm a person who am a results driven person. I mean, I tell people this. You wouldn't hire someone that they're not doing their job. If they're not doing their job, what would you do? You ultimately fire them. But the thing about it, I started to see the same thing when it came to me is that, hey, the same policies. That insane promises that have been told to my community for about 50, uh, 55 years, uh, even longer than that, uh, had honestly really uh, focused and actually moved away from its overall mission. You know, the uh, Democrat Party strayed more left individuals such as African-American men. This is the same policy. See, I say historic. You know, we have never been uh, uh, an entity that has been liked by the Democrats. Even if you want to go back to slavery, you know, black men have been were used as, as bucks, as the individuals who uh, uh, were the ones who were the breeders, you know, and were ripped away from their families, moved to, you know, they were able they were there to impregnate uh, the black woman. And the black woman, the reason why she's so strong, honestly, is mothers and how she's had to take an independent role, because honestly, this has been something that Democrats have done for so many years. They've actually you know, we were moved around to plantation to plantation just to be breeders, to create brand new labor, brand new slave labor. And the thing about it is, too, they continue the same thing. And then and when af after uh, Reconstruction, after the Civil War, you seen black men who wanted to create families. And we had more families uh, in our communities. We had um, our children were going to college. HBCUs were created. Uh, we started to see the influx of black men who wanted to be family, family oriented. But at the same time, too, you also started to see uh, if you break down the black family, then honestly, and you divide the black woman against the black man, then ultimately, you know, uh, someone is going to step up to that role. And again, ultimately, the black woman has been the one that's chosen more because more she's emotionally and she focuses strictly on a lot of social issues. Um, but black men are more fiscally conservative. Uh, they're more conservative in their issues. They, they, um, a lot of them are more religious. A lot of those individuals itself are family oriented. But the thing about it is, too, we catch that short end of the stick. Even when you look at child support, you know, the black man most likely is going to be the one who uh, catches the short end of the stick. If you start to look at uh, uh, law enforcement, if you start to look at how the criminal justice system, the three strikes laws, which were created by Democrats, were individuals that actually destroyed our community and, even, and, for, and forced us a little bit further away. So the thing I start to pay attention to is when they broke down that system, the Democrat Party itself, the black woman has been the one that's been the upstanding and the one who honestly has been the one who's kept the Democrat Party afloat. Honestly, when it comes to me and I speak to uh, my community, I, I'm sorry to separate myself, but uh, ultimately... The black woman was probably will probably be the last group of individuals to really leave the Democrat Party because she's honestly been the beneficiary of Democrat Party. Uh, excuse me, policy. Excuse me. And this is the thing I tell people back in 1932 and when, you know, FDR came around and they started to create the New Deal programs and welfare and well as, uh, you know, government assistance became built really big. There was two levels of that, two levels of, of welfare at that time. Uh, welfare back in the day, if you were a single white man who had a wife at home uh, and you worked would probably be the would be the recipients of the first level of welfare. And that second level of welfare actually was basically given to 
a single black woman. And so honestly, if you look at the welfare, if you sign those paperwork and you honestly realize a black man cannot be pre present at the home. You, they cannot be present at the home for that black woman to receive welfare. If you start to think, see things like WIC and other programs like that, it benefits the black woman. So honestly, the black woman would be the last group of individuals that would leave the Democrat plantation or the liberal plantation or when it comes to liberal issues. When I start to see a lot of black men today, you know, uh, look at Democrat policies today. You know, now they're pushing, they would rather have black men locked up then and they will let they would rather let in MS-13. That tells you a lot, you know, and we talk about illegal immigration. It affects black men 100 percent, 1000 percent. Honestly, it affects the black community 1000 percent. Those are going to be the individuals who you will see at social services, who will live in those uh, low income uh, housing. At the same time, too, the, they'll be the individuals who would actually work those um, those service jobs. And honestly, the contracting as well as the construction jobs jobs for lower wages and black men who used to do it cannot find those jobs. And so ultimately when I see black men today, and it just tells me a little bit about New York. When I was in New York, uh, there was a place again, they had day laborers uh, and individuals would go to try to find jobs in the construction agency. But there was so heavily populated and flooded by illegal immigrants who would get paid pennies underneath the table because ultimately again, they stuck together with their own groups and black men who wanted those jobs who might have been uh, recipients of, you know, might have had a fellow or had, you know, a criminal past who actually was trying to make better for them li their lives, would try to come back out of the out of prison and make a better life for their ch for their child. But at that time, the black woman has been empowered by the U.S. government. So ultimately, the U.S. government has been the fathers to so many black children since the 1960s, even 1932, when they started first uh, beginning the welfare program. And some people don't realize that black folks have been uh, have been voting majority Democrat not since 1964. It's been since 1932. And that's because before we were majority Republican, but then of course the Great Depression happened and ultimately uh, FDR came about and started to create New Deal programs. But we were split. But the thing about the community is we continue to have a split and we continue to have a voice before we became direct deposit Democrats. And what I start to see right now when it comes to black men, black men are being overshadowed. I've seen some of the great leaders that you have here who may not be liberal, who are straight up, who might be moderate, who understand, who still have a Christian background, who love God, who at the same time still have their own uh, views. Uh, even here in my, my, my city, you know, I've seen certain lawmakers who were replaced because they did not conform to the liberal Democrat part uh, policy, but yet they were the most effective lawmakers that Democrats ever had because they were able to create a bipartisan type of relationship with the other party. And the Democrats, the liberals did not like that. They called those people traitors and they made sure that they got those people out of office and replaced them with black women, Muslims, uh, individuals who, uh, you know, and no disrespect, I have no problem with the, the Muslim community, but the thing about it is, too, these individuals were the best uh, lawmakers that they had in this city. They were the most effective lawmakers in the city, but yet they got rid of those individuals because, again, they did not conform to the new liberal socialist par uh, party, which is known as the Democrat Party. Again, the white liberal. They still love God, and when they made their, and when they voted, they voted with their convictions. And the thing about it is, too, for black men, black men think different. And I told people from my part, and I told even people in the community, that the black men would be the first ones who would honestly really consider leaving the, Dem the Democrat Party, uh, become independent, or even become conservatives. Because ultimately, we are more focused on fiscal issues, what's in our wallets, if we're able to feed our families. But the problem that you start to have is an issue where, again, if you want to get rid of a black lawmaker or a black Democrat, all you have to do is run a black woman against him. Again, the number one fans of the Democrat Party have been the black women. And again, I love my black women, but ultimately they have been in power. They've been in power by the U.S. government. They've been the ones who held the stick. They've been the ones that ultimately, when the black man who might have been incarcerated tries to come back, and they wonder why there's a big uh, issue when it comes to recidivism. Recidivism is an issue when it comes to individuals going back into jail. They 
they might have been the ones who may not, who have made a mistake, who might have sold drugs to provide for their family or had an issue when they were younger. But when they came back, they had a felony and now they cannot get a job. But then they try to come back and they say, hey, I want to come back home. That black woman has already signed off everything to the U.S. government. And now the U.S. government is the new man in the house. So therefore, a black man cannot come into the household. So ultimately, I'm just telling you this for me. Again, I'm a person who looks at facts and I look at facts. I look, I look at for what it is. You know, if you do not hold your lawmakers and your communities accountable, those people who, uh, excuse me, who, um, who honestly, um, uh, represent those, uh, districts, you're going to continue to see what you see today. And ultimately, when it comes to black men, it's ultimately going to be you, just like those former slaves did. They came back and they were able to create the family. Without the family structure, we're not going to be anything in the black community. I remember growing up, you at least had programming such as good times. It don't matter if you was at the at the uh, at, down at your on your on, down on your do, uh, the dollar and had no money. If you were in the ghettos in the hood, good times. You had a man and a woman in the household. You had the Cosby Show, which showed middle class black men, black people, middle to upper class success. You had programming, family matters. It had a man and a wife in the household. You had programs again that honestly reflected a positive household when it came to the black community. But the problem is now, the things that we look at and how the, the liberals have already turned us is now loving hip-hop and being a baby mama is very, very more, is more important than creating a family. And black women have gotten to a point now that, hey, I don't need a man. I don't need a man for nothing. But ultimately, it's true because the U.S. government has ultimately replaced you. And again, if you look at right now, just look at the, the last uh, Democratic, you know, chairman election. There was a black man who ran. OK, uh, uh, Ellison, although I am not a fan of Ellison, his entire black caucus who had who had been a, a, a member for for years voted against him becoming the chair of the Democrat Party. But the Democrats said, hey, we already given you a black chair. We're giving you two, you know. You know, we already had one of those. We don't need those anymore. And then they looked at the numbers at the last election when about 88%, less than the 95% that voted for Barack Obama, you know, started to vote for a, and even 13% of black men voted for Trump. You know, you started to see, hey, we don't need you anymore. So they put Perez in. They put a Hispanic in, the first Hispanic chairman of the Democrat Party. And it's for a reason. It's for a design. It's not because ultimately he was the most qualified, because honestly, he's an imbecile for what I see. But the thing about it is they did it because ultimately they want to pull out a new group of people to replace you. And that's going to be the illegals and Hispanics. If the Democrats put as much time in our communities, the top 10 with the highest crime rates in America, which are run by Democrats, every slum in America. Come on, listen to this. Every slum and ghetto in America is run by a Democrat. So how does that help you out? They say they're fighting for you. Well, honestly, you must not be fighting so hard. And if you can't fight hard enough for us and change the, the trajectory of this community, then we need to get somebody else in place. But the problem is you have people like Maxine Waters and people like uh, Cleaver and people like, uh, who else, um, uh, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, all these people who call themselves who are ultimately black pawns and even when it came to the last election when you had hillary clinton going through issues when donald trump made the uh the 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 uh the statement what difference do you does it make hillary clinton called and marched out the whole entire black caucus to make a statement against donald trump and ultimately if you look at it right now the leadership that you have right now is so inept because they get their marching orders from those above so ultimately, black men, I'm making the appeal to you. And you start to see this, and I'm so happy to see so many black men who are stepping up to the plate and are, are being free thinkers, who are not afraid to say, hey, this is not working for my community. This party has lied to us for so many years. They act like they're your friends. But liberal policy ultimately is doing nothing to uplift the black community. We're not following Hollywood. When you start to look at the policies of the president opening up factories, it's not just white people that work in those factories. It's individuals, black people work in those factories. Black men have been the main group of individuals who tried to make a, tried to get back and make a living for their families.
But the problem is, is once you have a felony on your record, it's hard for you to really get a good paying job. And then you try to get into the service industry, but yet you've been replaced by the same illegals that the Democrats are pushing today. Open borders. Again, I tell you, this is all about a plan, a bigger plan. This plan has been enacted for years. They are wanting to create a brand new voting bloc. A, a new group of direct deposit Democrats because they start to realize that not only is our population decreasing, but ultimately <laughs> we're starting to wake up and not giving them that vote that they want 24-7. Have you ever wondered why they don't ever come into your communities only only come around during a presidential elections? They don't really educate you on what these offices do, and they really don't come around when it comes to those local elections. This is the thing. There is a um, agenda out there. When you look at the public schools, public schools are failing. I'm here in Charlotte Mecklenburg where you have about 60% of the school board that has black faces on it. But yet you still have segregated, low-performing schools. What? It, what it, why are you there? Because ultimately they get their marching orders from someone higher than them. These are the ones that do exactly what's put in place for them to move ahead and stay in their position. Ultimately, it's not a class struggle within our community. You know, excuse me, it's not a uh, black and white, it's a class struggle in our community. It's those who are up at the top who might look like me, trying to keep those like me at the bottom. Again, that's the reason why I walked away. And I'm going to tell you this right now, honestly, another reason why I walked away is because once the Democrat Party I elected a person who has white supremacist background. I'm going to keep telling you this over and over again. They talk about this so-called switch. There was never a switch. Ultimately, one thing I've noticed about, you know, individuals in this community is they're going to vote this before they vote a party. And ultimately, ultimately I'm going to tell you this right now. Those same Democrats, you got to realize, slave masters interacted with slaves. They knew how to control those slaves. They had no problem being around the slaves. So ultimately, when it comes to today, it's the same thing. You haven't been free. You are still underneath their party. You vote the same way Robert E. Lee did. Robert E. Lee, when he woke, walked in the voting booth, he walked and called himself a proud Democrat. And you want to rename a school because it's named after Robert E. Lee? Or you want to take out a statue because it's named after Robert E. Lee? But yet, when you go to the voting booth, you vote the same way Robert E. Lee did. <laughs> Again, it goes back to the ignorance of our community. If you realize, too, if our schools, they don't talk about civics. They don't talk about it even when it comes to your true history. That past slavery, you do have a history. And when it looks to education, and we also look at the lack of uh, upward mobility in some of these communities, even here in my city, Charlotte, it's better off you coming from somewhere else than you for be uh, than from a person who's from here to even move up, because ultimately they got you in a trap. And I tell you this, black men, they've been the main one locking you up. They've been the main one pushing these policies. And I tell them this, if that was so, and even when it goes to our former president, if he was so worried about the black community, when you had both houses of Congress, why didn't you get rid of three strikes? The thing about it is too, is ultimately these individuals make money. People like Hillary Clinton opened up more prisons in, 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 in NY state than any other senator. The prison, the industrial prison complex has been run. If you realize when it comes to public schools, they build prisons at third, within third grade off of test scores. And they move kids around. Even with the last administration, the education system dropped four points. And people don't realize that. Black people, it's not for you, honestly. I want you to wake up. And I ask you, ask yourself this question. Why are you a Democrat? Is it because they say you're black? But also, why are you a Democrat? Ask yourself that question. What have they done for you lately? And when it comes to that point, if you really sit back and look around, you'll realize, honestly, you're not even a thought. Because ultimately, they have a bigger plan. The liberal agenda, again, like Malcolm X said, and I'm sorry to make it so harsh. He said, for black men and you vote Democrat, that you are a disgrace to your race. Because ultimately... The white liberal cares nothing about you. <laughs> Again, it's the slave masters. They know how to control you. They've been around you. 
They are the ones who honestly, you know, push the Willie Lynch, you know, uh, model to you. They're the one who use you to, uh, talk out against another one. It's others, another slave who was smart and intelligent, brought an idea. He always used the other ones to go against him because ultimately that was his lifeline. That was his safety. That was their safety net. And they didn't want anything to disrupt that. Why are you, why, what is your liberty? What, why, why do you have a loyalty to a party which ultimately has nothing, has done nothing? I mean, just look around. Look at our schools. We don't focus on education no more. Look at our families. There's no men women in the households anymore. Let's really pay attention to our prison. In New York City, there are more black men in prison than there are black men with college degrees. If you realize it, again, wake up. And when you wake up, be like me. It's okay. No matter what they say, it's okay to walk away. Y'all be blessed, everybody. Thank you for joining this broadcast. Hey, and God bless America. Wake up now. It's time. It really is time. Matter of fact, it's been time. Y'all be blessed. Peace.